work in the 1850s side of the closet today. So it's actually squished in paint back here somewhere. Where's that one? This one. Let's go pull her out and look at her. So here it is. It's uh, another silk dress. Uh, most of my wardrobe is silk, actually. Um, so this one is a beautiful blue plaid dress that I literally just call the blue check dress. Anyway, so it is an 1850s dress. It has a basque and it's trimmed in self fringe and has these really cool little Van Dyke um, pagoda sleeves and Van Dykes on the basque as well. So it all kind of matches. But yeah, that's essentially her, and she has a nice long skirt, it's very plain. Um, let's see, things to do with her. We need to bone this bodice, because there's no boning in here. Um, that is something I forgot last time, so I'll just have to open up these darts and insert some boning. Um, we're going to make an evening bodice, because I actually do have the silk for that, or enough silk to do an evening bodice. And I think I have that planned out, how it's going to work. Um, yeah. So we're going to need to make new collars and new cuffs because actually the collar and the cuffs right now, these are original pieces and um, yeah, I made this dress a long time ago before I realized that we really shouldn't be wearing original pieces, especially ones that, you know, fit underneath where your skin is because that's going to harm and deteriorate those originals much quicker than say if they're just sitting in a box. So, so um, definitely do not need to be doing that anymore and I know better now. So we're going to take those off and set those aside in a nice little acid-free box with acid-free tissue paper to kind of preserve them. And we're going to need to make a new set of collar and cuffs. So yeah, that's essentially it. Um, it's made well, so we don't have to like, really redo anything. Um, it's a gauge skirt. There should be a watch pocket in here, if I remember correctly. There it is on this side. And there should be a pocket. Somewhere. Yep, it's in here. In theory, there actually should be a handkerchief in this as well. There is. Okay, cool. And I think we have skirt lifters too. Oh, we do. Look at that. Okay, so really the only thing that needs to be done with this bodice, aside from collar and cuffs, is boning. Um, and then we'll make an evening bodice to go with it. Here's the fabric we're working with today. It's just the excess from the last time I made this dress. Um, and I'm hoping I can fit everything in without having to piece too much. I should be able to, but fringe takes a lot of yardage, so I'm a little concerned about that. Other than that, I really just need um, one front piece, and I'm going to do um, the mini waist. And it's going to be cut, you know, as a back closing bodice. We're going to need two sides, two backs, and two sleeves. And then everything else should be just be fringe and trim and that sort of thing. So hopefully I won't have to piece too much. I would rather have long pieces of fringe. And I think this is where I cut the I think this is the edge where I cut the fringe last time. Oh we're also gonna need piping. I forgot about piping. Piping you can use tiny little scraps though, so I'm not worried. Too worried about that. I think this is the edge I worked with the piping. I think this is the edge I worked with last time to get the fringe. So yeah, let's go ahead and get cutting. Start sewing the pieces together. So I also cut lining. I'm gonna start with the back. this time period was piped, but let's go with the extreme vast majority were piped, at least in the, 
arms eye, usually also the neckline and the uh, waistline as well. There are a few, very precious few originals that do not show piping. Probably hundreds that I have either viewed in person or online, maybe four or five gowns without piping that I have seen. One of them actually belongs to our local museum, it's actually a local dress, which I thought was interesting. And when this gets sewn, I'm going to fold it over like this where you'll see the piping, and this can get folded under with down and you have a nice clean edge. I'm actually kind of excited to work on this gown because it's 1850s and I like the 1850s and we're going to be stuck in the 1830s for a very long time. I have mapped out the videos I'm going to do from basically now until December of 2021. It's all mapped out what I would like to get done. Um, might make a few changes here and there but it's essentially mapped out and for like the next two three months it's going to be a lot of 1830s videos, which is fine. Like, I need to build up that part of my wardrobe, the 1830s. Like, the 1850s stuff is built up. Like, there's nothing I really need for the 1830s. I have all the underwear. I have plenty of dresses. It's not an issue of not having. Whereas, opposed to the 1830s, I'm just starting out, and I, I don't have a dress yet. So, it's a good thing that we're working on it. It's just... Yeah. It's going to be... I've been trying to do like every other week do an 1830s or 1840s video and on the other weeks do an 1850s to 1860s video. That's not going to be happening for the next two or three months. I think it's going to be like three 1830s videos and then like 1850s and 60s and then like three 1830s and like another 1850s and 60s. So yeah, be looking forward to a lot of 1830s videos. One of my personal favorite evening gowns actually. Um, which we're going to have to get around to eventually because I still have not made the coloring that makes this a day of um, So essentially there's a bone right here in the very center. I think this one's completely hand stitched. And you see I did not fold over my edges here. That might need to be fixed. We shall see. Uh, let's see. So I have in the center. There's also a line in the center. So from the center to the edge is about two and a half. Mark the center because there's a, a lovely plaid. I put it right in the center. Made absolutely sure to make it even. So this is the center essentially. Two and a half inches over, more or less. It's going to be the start of our dart. And I'm also going to need like to make a little pocket here uh, for the boning, which we're going to put in. And I don't know whether we're going to do um, steel boning or fake whale bone. The bone is the bodice. So, the lost pen. I did add a little casing here and I put the boning in that one so I can just go ahead and close that one up. So we're going to put these bones in. I'm using steel ones today. Because I already have them. Might as well use them up. I do prefer to use the fake whale bone. It's the German plastic whale bone. And we're going to go ahead and pipe it as well on the bottom. Alright, we're going to work on these sleeves. So I have the little sleeve here. And I have, of course, ironed up. I believe we talked about it already. But if not, my iron edge is up. And we're going to take the fringe and pin it on very plainly. And then we'll cover the fringe up with velvet ribbon. So my next step will be to sew this on. Just basting stitches basically and I'll catch the edge of that so it doesn't like fold back over. And make it all nice and even. Alright, so let's go ahead and put in some sleeves. So I did run a little gathering thread on the sleeves just um, to make it fit better. I'm going to need to match this with this. I will say hand stitching on that velvet. I forgot how much of a pain that is just because of the fringe and it always constantly getting in the way. It was really annoying and it took a while to get through and the fringe is so much fun. I really should have done two layers of fringe because I think that's what's more typical on originals. I don't have an original with self-fabric fringe, so, but I have um, had people who have looked at originals and they have told me that two layers of fringe is more normal. Um, but I don't have a whole lot of fabric, so we're going to leave the one layer on here. I'm going to try to do two layers on the actual bodice. Because um, now that I remember, I actually did do two layers of fringe on the day bodice, so probably should keep that in mind. Alrighty, I have been working on the next step, which is putting in eyelets on the back of the bodice. 
which takes forever because they're all done by hand. So basically, I know we've done eyelets on the channel before, but I made, made a hole with an awl, so we're not cutting the hole, we're just um, pushing the fibers around. That makes it stronger at the wear, so you cut it, it weakens the fibers. And we're basically going to do a buttonhole stitch around. Ironically, I don't hate eyelets. I actually rather enjoy doing eyelets. Although it's the exact same stitch as buttonholes, and I hate buttonholes. So, not entirely sure where that's coming from. So I have a bit of the fabric here. And seriously, I know we made. And you just pull. There's little fringy bits at the very bottom. I need to do enough to go around the bodice twice because we're going to, of course, double it like we should have done with the sleeves. And then, yeah, that'll basically, and then we can just put it on the bodice and cover it with velvet. Let's put on the fringe. So I made a little bit of trimming. So this is just two layers of fringe put together and folded over so they stay together. And I marked on the bodice where I want the fringe. fringe part to start where the pins are going. Take out these pins as I go. So that's how that's going to look kind of on the back there. And we're going to keep going up. Try not to cover any of my little eyelet holes so I can actually get the dress on. Okay. That can get stitched on and then we'll put on the velvet over it, which should be slightly easier um, once we get the fringe actually sewn in. Alright, I was thinking we were going to get to um, put velvet on the evening bodice tonight. However, um, I thought I was going to use inch wide velvet ribbon. That is just, the scale just doesn't look right on the evening gown. It needs to be narrower. Um, didn't have nearly enough half inch ribbon and the 3 8 inch ribbon just was a little skimpy. So went ahead and ordered the 5 8 inch velvet ribbon. So that should be coming in in a couple days. And I figured while we're waiting, let's go ahead and cut up a tucker and the under sleeves. So I know we've made plenty of tuckers on this channel before. Um, I'm going to use this lace and a little, little tiny edging. So I think I'm going to cut it two and a half inches. And then under sleeves. And this is actually the same pattern as the sleeves. Currently we're just not going to do the Van Dykes. We're going to keep it the length instead of cutting it an inch down. And I'll put a little, um, I'll gather it on the bottom and put a band there as well. Two inches wide. Alright, so let's go ahead and sew up the side of the sleeves, under sleeves, whatever these are. And then I'm going to put gathering thread just along the bottom so we can gather it up. It won't be terribly gathered or very poofy, just a tiny little bit, which will be fine. Alright, I am pinning lace to the tucker real quick. I'm also going to attach this little Way, at least my chemise won't show, which is kind of the purpose of them. The velvet ribbon came in, so we can go ahead and put it on. 
That's good. I don't want to cover up any of the eyelets. Now, the original I have that has velvet trim is 1860s, but I'm assuming that how we attach the trim hasn't changed too much, so I'm going to be using a tiny, tiny little running stitch on both the top and the bottom. I think that 5 8 through room was exactly what I needed it to be. And here is our evening bodice. I'm going to go ahead and put velvet ribbon in the um, tuck right here. these cute little buttons um, with just lace and some glass buttons and we're going to put them on here. I'm going to put one at the very center here, probably one more on top, sort of like a brooch, and then one kind of in the middle. And we're also going to put some on the sleeves. And I'm going to show you all how I made these in just a second, but um, we're going to put these on this gown first so that this gown can be done and then whenever we do the day bodice I'll show you how to make them. And it's also going to weigh these sleeves down a little bit, which is kind of what they need. We're just one looks like one on the sleeve, and we're just going to do one on here, one on here, and the other side as well. Alright, let's insert some bones. I just cut a little slit after making the bone channels. I'm going to stick the bone right in here. And I'm going to just stitch right across a couple of times and hold that in. And we'll do the same thing down here. I was feeling a little lazy and I didn't want to take the whole thing apart because with how much trim is here I'd have to take basically the entire, all the trim out and everything. Okay, let's just sew that up. We have bones. Let's look up the little trim button. So I just took a length of um, lace, uh, 10 inches long, which is probably a little longer than I needed it to be. I, if I were to do this again, I'd probably do it more like 7 or 8 inches. And I put the ends together, stitch them right up together. And then I ran a gathering thread all along the edge, all the way around the lace. Once I finish that, I just pull it together. That essentially makes a little shape. I distribute those. Put the button in the middle, and we're going to just sew, and then we're just going to sew the lace to the button. I'm going to do that a couple of times just to make sure it's secure, and there's my little lace button. Again, I think cutting down on the amount of lace a couple inches would have been really good, and then even making it using a bigger button the original so it's a little bit better. And then for these on the day bodice we're going to put one on each of the little sleeve points and then we're going to, I think I'll have three left over, maybe four, and we're going to put them down the front. Usually you don't, with the decorative buttons like this, you only see about three. So, and I'm going to leave a space up here for a brooch. So it's going to start like here, here, and go down to the waist. But while we're here, we might as well go ahead and sew on the collar. I did a hand embroidered collar. And I might as well go ahead and sew this on. I gotta keep working on the undersleeves, so I think I'm going to sew on buttons and then work on undersleeves. Look at the undersleeves on. That is basically it. I didn't have to do anything to the skirt today. So the pattern for embroidery that I chose, I think it's from 1855. It was a Godey's pattern. And it's really first or second collar I've ever embroidered. So it's fairly, it's new to me. Um, I don't think I have it quite down yet. The stitches are, um, I think I'm using a thread that is just too big. I think I need a finer thread to mimic the original embroideries. And of course, these are were meant to be taken out, so. And of course, collars are meant to be taken out and washed, so I don't, don't put any effort into sewing in a collar. 
very last step on this bodice, we're going to attach the undersleeves. So the undersleeves I made, let me find them. I I hand embroidered a little undersleeve just like the collar, um, and then attached it to like a little cuff and a sleeve. And we've done tons of this on the channel, but essentially undersleeves aren't tacked in very well. I pinned them in before, just like the collar, it's the same principle. Day bodice! So yeah, we didn't really do much with this one except for add collars and cuffs, and of course the button. If it's a little weird right here, mostly because I just ate cheesecake and I didn't place my corset up like I normally do, so that's easily fixed. Uh, collar and undersleeves look really nice. I don't particularly enjoy hand embroidery, but um, I'm glad I did them. And I think it looks really good, and I think it adds a lot to the gown. So, glad I did it. Let's just put it that way. These are a little off center. I thought this was direct center, but it's not. So these just need to be moved over half an inch, which is an easy, easy fix. So I can do that like in three minutes and be done. So that's essentially the day bodice. Uh, we did most of our work on the evening gown. I'm going to try to lace it up by myself. We're going to see how this works. Um, but yeah, day bodice evening bodice, which I actually mostly laced up by myself, it's still slightly unlaced. And I have like strings trailing me throughout to the next room, so. <laughs> but yeah, it looks really, really good. I really like how this turned out. Um, really, really like the fringe, which I wasn't quite sure about. Um, it definitely needs to be um, combed, and then um, I tried using like a lint brush to kind of get it off the velvet, um, but I now see why I can only find two or three originals with the velvet over the fringe, but everything else had like silk lace. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a reason for that, but I imagine the ladies who did have the velvet, because I did find a few, um, have the same issue that I am having now. So it is probably a period problem to have. Um, other than that, the tucker isn't um, laced at all, so it's kind of gaping up a little here, which it wouldn't normally do if I had the tucker. Um, and then this is kind of bulky, because I'm not wearing the right chemise for this, and so it's like gaping here, so it, it gives me a funny shape here, but that's, that's all fixable. Um, that's because I had to get myself dressed today, and, um, that's difficult to do with the back closing bodice, but it's easier with the lacing than it is with hooks and eyes. So may have to make that as a mental note and perhaps next time just do lacing because I can get into lacing by myself. It's difficult and it's time consuming but I can do it, um, which is nice. But yeah, so <laughs> I am wearing one of the headdresses we made together, the really dangly one, I really like this one because it's really dangly. And um, although the flowers are not red, the uh, little stamens are bright bright red just like the buttons, so um, I thought it was the closest that really went well with the dress. So, yeah, very pretty gown. Of course, we have the little zips in the sleeves as well. I think we made a good choice to put them just on the top three. You can't see any of the other, like, on the bottom or anything. That's really all you see anyway. So, um, it works out. I don't have to, like, feel them when I put my arms down. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. It turned out extremely well. And the point comes down pretty far. Um, but it's not like flopping up because boning's in there, so that's helpful. Um, other than that, that is basically it. So, um, I'm actually really happy with this one. Um, we've been making a lot of really pretty evening dresses lately, which is nice. I don't attend a lot of evening events though, but when I do, I'll have a lot of variety. Um, which I guess is a good thing. But yeah, um, that's basically what it looks. I'll show you the back again. The non fully laced back. Um, I think this is going to be our last dress for a while, unfortunately. Um, I was looking at the uh, list I made of all the um, videos I would like to do, and uh, we're doing a lot of 1830s things, but not quite getting to the dress part yet. So, um, yeah. It may be. It may be a month and a half to two months before we get to another dress, and that will be an 1830s dress. Um, it's just I have a few things I need to take care of as far as like impression details and um, things to do while I'm at events, and then um, yeah, that sort of thing. So 
yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a little break from dresses. Um, but I'm glad we got this one done, and we're kind of and we're kind of popping that, you know, on a really high note um, with this gown. So that that is helpful. And um, we'll resume dresses probably late January, early February. Um, I have a couple more in there that we need to fix, and then I'm um, working on some 1830s gowns because I have at least three dress lengths. We'll get to those. Um, I have a couple. I have several more dress lengths meant to be 1850s and 1860s gowns as well. In fact, I just bought another one that came in the mail today. So, um, there will be no shortage of dresses. We're just going to take a small little break from them and, and just get some other things done. Um, I have some outerwear I really need to get done. In late January, I'm going to be attending an, uh, a conference, actually, and I usually dress out for those the entire weekend. And so, um, it's January, it's usually pretty cold. I need to get some outerwear together. Um, so I'm not freezing. Most of our 1850s and 1860 stuff is going to be outerwear for the next couple months, and then lots of the 1830s just impression stuff kind of sprinkled in. We will get back to them, so it's just it's just a little little break. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.